Alright, what is going on guys? It is your boy TKD123 here, back again here on PlayStation Source. And yes, we have some more things to talk about. Iki Island Expansion coming to the Ghost of Shima Director's Cut next month on August 20th. I'm definitely hyped for it. Definitely expect a stream series involving this DLC. And of course, if you missed out on my first video about kind of the overall, what you'll be getting for PS5 upgrades and all that great stuff, definitely check out the video that we did a few weeks back. I'll link it over here in the top right hand corner. But going into this whole video, they did put out a blog that details specific aspects and the story of the EG Island expansion that we'll be doing in Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. So definitely hyped for that. Cannot wait for it. Let's read the synopsis here. So Jin's journey begins when he discovers that a mysterious Mongol tribe has gained a foothold on Iki. They are led by a revered shaman called Angsar Katan, I think. Oh, I, I, I butchered the hell out of that. I'm sorry. Angshar, Angshar Katan. Oh god, I'm, I'm so bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Known to her followers as the Eagle. That's what we're going to call her now, okay? The Eagle, okay? As both a Katan and Shaman, she is not only a conqueror of nations, but a shepherd of souls. And the danger she presents to Jin and his people is unlike any they have faced. And so, of course, we have the Katan part of this new character, the Eagle, which is the female version of Khan, meaning someone who is noble, right? Then we have a Shaman, which I'm sure you guys probably know what that is already but that is a person having access and influence over the good and evil spirits often they can enter a trance state during ritual to practice divination and healing as well so this main antagonist the eagle here is looking to be a super cool offshoot of the mongols they definitely are trying to separate them from the traditional mongols that we fight on tsushima and they definitely do you know delve into the more kind of like mystical horror elements that we saw in legends right and of course in the trailer we see the eagle give Jin this some sort of like concoction to put him in what seems to be a trance, right? Like we see some blurred edges around some shots that definitely point to it being a vision that Jin is living and playing through as well as we see a brief clip of young Jin as well in this sort of like mystical type of environment that I think is some sort of vision that the eagle is giving Jin. So this is definitely going to delve into the past of Jin, which we will talk about here in a little bit, but definitely this does have a really cool vibe to it i love the way the eagle looks aesthetically i think this looks so cool so unique and definitely does have a different flavor than you know facing the con in the original game and everything so they also say here that the only way to counter this threat is for Jin to return to iki island he's been there once before so that is interesting too like this is not a you know brand new island that he has never been to he has been here before and in confronting a new and dangerous enemy he will be forced to face old fears and unearth deeply buried traumas as you explore a new island and battle new threats you'll also delve into the dark past of clan sakai and so this is very interesting too right so he has been there before he has some sort of history with this island and everything and um he has to once again face a deeply buried trauma and face the dark past of clan sakai in my mind i did have a video that i was going to kind of make separate of this whole thing but i can love it here in this whole video because it's really the main point of this whole thing i think that the trauma that Jin must face and the past that he has to relive and kind of really come to terms with is the murder of lord kazumasa sakai his father right this was definitely something that we saw in the main game you're seeing footage of it right now we have seen this before but you know could this mysterious mongol tribe right like this mongol tribe that has taken over the occupants of iki islands you know kind of be somewhat connected to the killing of Jin's father so according to the ghost of Tsushima wiki page of course we know that you know Jin's father was killed by a bandit during an uprising called the Yarikawa rebellion and Lord Shimura hunted down and beheaded that bandit that we know in a separate mission as well so we do know that we won't see the person that actually killed Jin's father right so we won't see him but maybe we'll learn more about why the bandit killed his father in the first place and the Mongol tribe that he now belongs wants to right like are those things connected in any shape form or fashion i think i think i think we're gonna know right because of course we know right that a bandit killed Jin's father right 
And if we consider what they have said about this island in terms of, you know, this Iki Island being very different from Tsushima, where the island is described as being a wild, lawless land of raiders and criminals, this could be where the bandit, you know, was from, or maybe the bandit went to, or maybe the bandit ended up in, right? And, you know, they also go on to mention that the samurai have not had control of Iki Island for decades. The people of Iki Island, while also described in the blog as being pirates, smugglers and bad monks as well are apparently scarred by memories of war and are fiercely independent so could these all have been so this is where i put the tinfoil hat on guys this is not confirmed this is just me just going off the cuff thinking about this right now right could these you know pirates smugglers bad monks these you know outlaw men essentially you know these criminals these raiders right and maybe you could also say could these bandits right could they have all been previous you know samurai could they have been ex clan sakai maybe some of them right and maybe that's where we're going to get the backstory of the clan sakai as a whole because we will not only be getting the backstory of of course some of the traumas that Jin has to live with and deal with but also like they like they said here in the blog we'll be delving into the dark past of clan sakai so what may, maybe there's some dark element to clan sakai and maybe you know these ex raiders and bandits and pirates are you know some of them maybe could be ex clan sakai that diverted from from the clan and now live in this island uh you know upon its own and maybe this is what made the you know mysterious mongol type of force come into this island and easily you know sway these people to maybe work for them and everything because uh maybe they have some sort of resentment towards the samurai way themselves who knows maybe we'll see it all come to fruition but i do think that all of these are somewhat connected i do think that the trauma is going to revolve around uh you know jin's dad while of course they didn't get into too much detail here but we will have new techniques to learn and new legends to hear about definitely does uh you know make sense that why they would definitely not want to tell us this initially maybe they will be sharing more info over time but we will be of course having more techniques and new storylines and all that good stuff but they do say that the story will overall be about healing according to what sucker punch says they say here quote we'll also continue to tell intimate emotional personal stories stories about real people struggling to let go of old hatreds and survive in a time of war stories about how it feels to be caught between preserving cherished beliefs and defending your home what it means to be lord sakai what it means to be the ghost and that also kind of feeds into why i think that you know these bandits and these pirates and these smugglers that are on iki island have some sort of connection to clan sakai maybe not all of them but maybe some of them maybe all of them are just ex samurai from different clans that you know have diverted and just you know were tired of being caught you know from what here the blog says we're we're going to hear stories about this like maybe they were caught between preserving these cherished beliefs and also caught between the other aspect of defending your home and what it means to you know be an individual as opposed to being a individual that is hellbent and is supposed to be devoted to a cherished belief right like like maybe all of these you know you know smugglers and pirates and everything maybe they felt a little bit about what maybe Jin feels right and, and then and then maybe this is what is going to be the underlining like precipice that could also bolster Jin's journey as how he was caught in a similar place between this whole thing caught between Lord Shimura and what he wanted out of Jin to defeat the Mongols in a samurai fashion as opposed to having the ways of the ghosts where you know Jin looks more at the people and wanting to protect the people by any means means necessary right and maybe you know this could be the other side of that coin where if you guys recall we will have access to this dlc post the ending of act one and getting into act two at this point lord shimura has already been saved from Jin and everything and you know definitely as you know we see uh you know lord shimura definitely hears that you know Jin is using not the most you know uh, uh, uh best ways to go about solving the situation of him being captured 
as a samurai. He's doing a little bit of wild things and stuff like that. He's acting in a very ghost fashion and pushes Jin against that as soon as he saves him. So maybe, you know, this is seeing the other side of that coin and seeing uh, people have this same struggle that Jin is having on this island and stuff like that. And maybe he feels compelled to save them from the Mongols as well. This is super cool. I'm really enjoying the concept of this. Cannot wait to see what we get into here. I could be wrong, guys. I could be totally wrong. This is me just kind of just, you know, want to just sit down and just talk a little bit about how I've been feeling that this is definitely going to tie into Jin's dad. That is the trauma that is having here. And this new info about, you know, the nature of these people on Iki Island that they could delve into and know the history and the past of Clan Sakai since we're dealing with that in the DLC. But also one of the best things about this expansion, yes, it was shared on Twitter. It wasn't even in the main trailer. It was a little bit, kind of, sort of, but you can pet wild animals by calming them down with your flute. They can be cats, they can be deer, they can be monkeys. This is 10 out of 10 content, guys. L guys, right here, 10 out of 10 banger content right here. Come on now. How can we not buy this? You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Yes, I know we, we're all questioning the overall cost of it. And, you know, judging by everything we have talked about here, um, we do still have that report uh, from an alleged QA tester last week that came out that this expansion could be 10 to 15 to 20 hours of content. I'm a little bit skeptical about the 20 hour side, but I could see maybe 10 to 12. You know what I'm saying? But we'll have to see. Uh, but regards of that, I think we're in for a real good treat here i'm excited to play more ghost content let me know what you think in the comments below what do you guys think the whole dark trauma pass is what do you think about the inhabitants in iki island of uh, like the nature of these people do you think they tie to clan sakai directly or indirectly let me know your thoughts oh by the way also how you feel about the eagle the new antagonist in this dlc she seems dope as hell what are your thoughts down there in the comments below and make sure also while you are down there check out that description you can find links to our discord our Twitter and the anchor link that way you can listen to our long form content in podcast format. Those, of course, being Safe Slot Podcast as well. We did an episode with, of course, Joe, Mr. Bad Bit, aka PlayStation Trophy Room's own co host, there where we talked a little bit about the PS5 report card, how the PS5 is doing in its eight months on the market, all the great stuff that we check out that on podcast services and, of course, other content here on the channel, stream series, all that great stuff. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like on the video and stay subscribed to PlayStation Source to keep up with the latest and greatest in PlayStation. Thank you all for watching, and as always, greatness awaits.